Hi, Steve here from Angels Plus again, and uh, this is also uh, one of our employees, Mila from Angels Plus, and this bigger lump down here on the, lo on the ground is uh, Baron, and uh, these guys keep us going every week. So uh, this week we're going to talk a little bit about uh, quarantine, and uh, Baron looks like he wants to sit in my lap during this presentation, <laughs> but uh, we're going to talk about why you should quarantine your fish, and then how to quarantine them, and this is really critically important. So uh, this is one of those videos where you might want to stay tuned to the end, even if it's boring. Okay, uh, before we get going on the quarantined uh, portion, we're going to talk, uh, we're going to answer a couple of the questions that were submitted about the active filter video from last week. And first, uh, we had a question from uh, Ben, who's uh, from Kentucky. And Ben would like to know how long to wait to add uh, fish to his tank after he introduces the active filter. And uh, we get this question frequently, so this is a, a good time to uh, answer that. As soon as you have your fish in the tank, uh, or as soon as you have the active filter in the tank, you can put the fish in the tank. Uh, it's not necessary to wait a certain number of hours or anything. Um, the fish um, it, it start excreting ammonia right away, and that ammonia is what keeps the filter going. So don't worry about waiting to introduce the fish. You put the filter in, then you put the fish in right after. Uh, and then the next question we got was uh, from Craig, uh, who's from Massachusetts. And Craig wanted to know if he could cut the filter up and put it inside of his canister filter. Uh, apparently he just didn't want, like the looks of it, didn't want it in his tank. Um, or didn't have an air supply or pump or something like that. Uh, it's common that people ask that question too. And really, um, you can do anything you want with this active bacteria. You can cut it up, put it in your canister filter. You can insert it, uh, you know, cut it down a little bit, put it inside an outside power filter. Um, just about anything you can think of where you can get water flowing past it or through it will work. It may not work quite as good, but it will work. So uh, don't worry about cutting it up or anything like that. You can do it. Uh, but if you do cut it up, then you don't have an extra filter setting aside that you can use as an active filter for a new tank. So there, there is a little bit of a positive if you can keep it as a sponge filter and continue to use it as a sponge filter uh, for future quarantine situations or uh, future new tank setups, you know, that type of thing. Okay, now why should we quarantine? Um, it's so much easier to just put the fish in the tank and uh, your fish look healthy anyway and, you know, it shouldn't make a big difference if you if you put your fish in a, in a tank that looks healthy. Well, uh, there's a few reasons why you want to quarantine. The first is you, you want to protect your fish from any incoming problems. Uh, you can't trust what anybody says about their fish on the internet. They'll say they have disease-free fish and they're going to send you disease-free fish, but you shouldn't believe it. It's great if, they're, if, if they truly do have it, but don't believe it because you're risking everything you currently have in way of stock to any new possibly deadly pathogens. So what you want to do is you want to protect yourself by not exposing your current stock to a possible disease. There's also the, uh, the opposite reason. Um, if somebody asks me, should my fish be quarantined when I ship them to somebody, I tell them always. And it's not because my fish are diseased. It's be, you know, my fish are not diseased. My fish are probably in one of the only disease-free hatcheries in the United States. But when you ship fish, it's stressful. When fish arrive under stress, their immune systems are not going to work as good as they should. And when they don't work as good as they should, they're prone to catching the, any problems that are present. If there's a pathogen of some sort or a parasite of some sort, then they're more likely to come down with that problem. It might take two, three, four days, five days, but it's more likely to happen. So you want to have our fish in quarantine for a few weeks so they're used to your water, they're used to your feeding, they're used to the stress that you're putting on them, and their immune system is recovered so that now it's not a problem when uh, they're exposed to a possibly uh, semi-pathogenic um, uh, uh, situation. Um, another point that I'd like to t touch on here is that uh, a lot of people say, ah, I don't really need to quarantine your fish because my, my tank's really healthy. It's been healthy for years, never a problem in it. And the problem with that is that people don't understand exactly how uh, a lot of parasites and pathogens work. Uh, 
it's a symbiotic relationship where they're not trying to uh, kill their host. It's the ideal situation is for them to just slightly harm the host. The host uh, lives on happily with some stress and the, the parasite continues to live off the host because that's what they do. They, they live off the host. If the host dies, the parasite dies or has to find a new home. And that's not the ideal situation. They want the host to live. But the problem is in aquariums, there's extra stresses, extra problems. And so they don't always live. Sometimes the parasites kill them when, they, when they're, they're not supposed to. And uh, so you can go years and years and years with the parasite living in harmony with its host. Uh, but when we add that stressed fish, boom, your fish are fine. The stressed fish gets sick and you think it was the stressed fish that had the problem when you got it. And it's the reverse. It's your tank with the problem giving it to the stressed fish. And so that's, uh, you know, you definitely want to try to avoid that. Um, it's just a situation that, that um, most people assume that if their fish look healthy, they are healthy. And uh, I've looked at thousands of fish under a microscope, literally thousands uh, from all sources, from pet shops, from, from breeders, from, from high-end, uh, well-named breeders. I have never, ever had a fish that I brought in that I looked at under a scope where I didn't find a parasite. And usually I found two, three, four, five different ones. So uh, you can pretty much count on it, 100% sure that your fish have parasites and that they're sitting there waiting to attack. So you're just waiting for stressed fish, that's all. And uh, you, that's what we want to try to avoid. Okay, now how do you quarantine? Um, quarantine isn't just as simple as, uh, you know, setting up a tank and and throwing your fish in it. If you, if you don't do it right, uh, pathogens have an amazing ability to get from one tank to another. So uh, my own personal uh, preference is to always do it as far away as possible, uh, isolate the quarantine tank. I also, uh, in order to keep it in a quarantine situation, make sure that I never touch that quarantine tank until I'm ready to you know, go to bed, something like that, because if you touch your quarantine tank and then touch one of your other tanks, touch one of your other tanks, then touch the quarantine tank, chances are you're going to spread pathogens because some of these things are one cell. They're, they're small. They're, they're tiny little critters. That, one drop of water and you move that one drop of water to your other tank and it's, it's moved. It's now, it's now in the other tank. So uh, quarantine at least in another room. You cannot properly quarantine in the same room. I don't care what anybody says. It cannot be done. Uh, a bubble coming to the surface of the water in, a, in any tank will burst when it, when it gets to the surface. And when it bursts, it sends micro droplets into the air. And it sends them into the air, you know, not measured in inches, but measured in feet. And viruses and, and bacteria can easily uh, ride along on those micro uh, droplets and end up in another tank. Um, there are even some parasites that are very, very tiny, and the eggs of the parasite can travel. I mean, they're, they're so small, they can be on the smallest drop, and many of them can travel through the air. So it makes it seem as if uh, the virus or the bacteria is airborne, when indeed it's, it's not. It's, it's very few things that are airborne. Almost always they're transferred by being too close to the other tank. Always have a wall in between it. Always have a procedure where you never walk near the quarantine tank and then near your other tanks because sooner or later you're going to pass something from one tank to another, even if it's just walking in the uh, water on the floor and then walking over to the other tank and you know setting a siphon or a net on the floor and then picking it up, and putting it into the tank. You you will move it very easily. So quarantine. Uh, should be in a separate room, separate, uh, very carefully controlled situation. Now, quarantine fish should be set up with a good biological filter, but it's not as simple as taking some of the water from your good tank, because if you take the water from your good tank, put it in the quarantine tank, it's not quarantined anymore. You've, you've now added the water with all of its problems to your quarantine tank. You can't add filter material, the same thing. There, there's really... Uh, a very uh, a lot of difficulty in setting it up properly. And now, since you need an active biological filter in your quarantine tank, and you don't have a good source for this bacteria, it can be difficult. But uh, this uh, this is where you can get one of our active filters to set up your quarantine tank, and then. Uh, 
you know, after you're done, if you, if you want to, you can try to keep that filter active by sterilizing it and then starting it over in a, in, in, in a fishless cycle situation where you're just using ammonia. We don't like fishless cycles. I don't think they work good, but at least it gives you, you know, an alternative for a safe filter if you have to have one down the road. Okay, so uh, assuming you've gone through your quarantine procedure with your fish, how do you know it worked? I mean, you don't really want to take that uh, fish and introduce it to your aquarium with hundreds of dollars worth of stock in it and find out that, you know, it's got something really bad that it's immune to, but your fish are not. And, and so you end up having a, a situation where you lose everything. Uh, so the ideal thing to do when you're going to test to see if your quarantine was successful and the fish are truly safe is that you hopefully have one fish that you consider a slightly more disposable than the others and you're going to be willing to risk that fish. Uh, if you're a breeder, you probably have a call or two. You could probably try this on, but you take that fish and you stress it a little bit. You put it in a, you know, a bag. To put it, you know, bag it up as if you were shipping it, and, and uh, put that bag aside for a couple of days so the fish is stressed, and then you release that into the quarantine tank. And when it's stressed, if there's a virus there, if there's a pathogen of some sort, a parasite, um, it should overcome that stressed fish rather quickly. And then you'll know, yes, I, we still have a problem in this quarantine tank, or no, my stressed fish is doing fine. I'm pretty confident now in my quarantine situation. And you can now put that quarantined uh, tank, the occupants there, you can put them into your other tanks if that's what you planned on doing with them. Or you can move them into your fish room or whatever it is you want to do. You can be relatively certain that you, you're through that period. Chances are, though, that there's some problem in that tank. And... Uh, if you have a microscope, it really helps with uh, figuring out what you have and being able to put the proper medications in there to treat the tank. Um, most people don't have microscopes, so they end up doing hit and miss type uh, treatments. And in quarantine, uh, that's the place where you want to treat. You want to, you know, you want to get your medicated foods uh, or whatever else you're going to be treating with. You, you, you try to save anything that's going to kill your filter to the very end. Uh, any bacterial treatments or anything like that. But uh, you want to treat for your parasites and those types of pathogens early on in the cycle with medicated foods and do it systematically so that you can eliminate most of the problems that they may carry with them. Okay, we're going we're gonna to wrap this segment up uh, with that. Uh, we could get into more detail, but we won't do that this time. We'll save those for some other videos. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, once again, you can put them in the comment section of the blog and we'll be, you know, we'll try to answer a couple of those on our next video. And uh, as a little thank you for, uh, for watching all this, because I know quarantine and subject can be a little bit boring, we're going to offer everybody a, uh, a special on our uh, Apple snails on our website. 50% off for the next uh, week or so until uh, September 28th. All you have to do is enter in the discount coupon box on checkout, um, snail blog, one word, snail blog, and uh, you'll get 50% off any Apple snails that you order. Appreciate it very much. Have a nice day.